4,000 4 megabits of pure, unadulterated nightmare fuel. Wait, this is a Wednesday show. I mean, very polite, pure, unadulterated nightmare fuel. The kind you... 4,000 mega, 4, megabits of four. <laughs> Just the number four repeating. The, that's all it is, man. It's a signal. We're trying to tell the people something, but we don't know what it is. <laughs> Neither do they. It's four. That's what it is. It's four. It's the number four. Just the number four. Wouldn't that be great if it was just straight up E.T., but they were just dicking with us? <laughs> or, or like con- contact where they're like, have you build a giant like dick butt <laughs> of like a massive like space visible area? It's like right. the Nazca lines. That, that, well, that actually, that, that method of uh, thought would explain a lot of bizarre ancient. It's like, <laughs> look what we got them to do this time. Yeah, no, no, the pyramids. Yeah, that totally looks like one of our reproductive organs. Those idiots. <laughs> They've built an entire field of them. <laughs> All right. Hey, beautiful people, what's going on? We're just doing the pre-shows and for Linux Weekly, Daily, Wednesday, sitting back, relax. It looks a little bit different. Um, <laughs> just a bit. You you might notice uh, th- there's one Jordan joining us. And I'm not Pedro. And that, that is actually the person for the entire show will only be referred to as not Pedro. <laughs> or Aww. alternatively, just Pedro. Hi, oh. Steve Husband. Hi, S. Michelle. Hi, Romlock. Hi, Mir PPC. Hi, Strider. Matthew. <laughs> All the beautiful party people. Beautiful party All my patrons. friends. <laughs> Joining us in Chat Realm Dynamic and our discords in the IRCs. It's there. And uh, we haven't had anything blow up yet. Notice how I said yet. So that could very well be a thing. (laughs) Yes, the Hangout video is not the prettiest. (laughs) No, it's more like a um, reference. We don't, honestly, here's like the weird thing. We don't know exactly why it does that. It's not a bandwidth thing. Yeah, because it was much better before you went live. Once Mm -hmm. you went live... it got really pixely. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just use that to make sure that I'm on screen when I'm talking. Otherwise, it's other person's time to talk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hi, Rob Block. <laughs> I'm sure, Jill, you've witnessed our shenanigans over the years. You, you know, that with the first technological hurdle we overcame was the ability to talk over each other because we're impatient and wholly uncourteous. Yes. <laughs> right. Just making sure you know the rules. Yes. The only rule is that there are no rules. You know, I always, I always feel bad inviting a guest on the show, and I forget to explain that, and they're polite. I was like, why are they so quiet? Oh, they're waiting for a chance to talk. Oh. Yeah. 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 Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Understand. Yeah, as everyone's favorite, <laughs> uh, as everyone's favorite uh, quickie mark proprietor once said, push and shove. You'll get there faster. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Hello, Mr. Alert. He's in there, too, oh, of course. Okay, like three days ago, Jordan, it was negative. It, it got up to not, okay? It's like two degrees outside now. I went out without a jacket. It was dude, great. Dude, 17 outside right now. You know what? If it were 17 degrees right now, there'd just be like flooding everywhere. So I didn't whatever. even think about it. I went one out yesterday, you know, before we did the live stream, meet the Freemans, go watch it. It's beautiful. We were trying to beat um, Half Life 2 in co op mode on hard. It's a horrible idea. Of course, we're trying that. Um, yeah, we're, we're getting stuck on turrets so many. <laughs> we, like, we have a plan if you show up for the after shows and on Saturdays. Um, we're, we'll, we're going we'll to use it. Through it. Right, we we have a strategy of throwing people at it, so be prepared to play that in the after shows, and we're gonna kill. We, we call it the wall of the wall of Freemans, as we call it. Mm-hmm. Awesome, so just yeah, like we did on sh- Serious Swing, and, and yeah, and beat the boss. That was awesome. <laughs> I've something told me is like, wait a minute, look, <laughs> they're doing pretty good here. Hang on, how do I spectate? Yeah. Right. <laughs> let, let, let me actually record this instead of um. So, yeah, we, we have that forever. Yeah, that video turned out really nice. It was 60 frames per mm-hmm. second uh, HD. Yeah, it was 720p mm-hmm. 60. 
which you know way better. Seven twenty. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's that's what we stream at these days. Yeah. <laughs> which is kind of surreal because that's effectively as much as we could record way back when. Yeah. <laughs> Now if, we we, um, we, gotta get, we gotta get that 4K 60 Linux game cast. Yeah. Yes. No one needs that much us, man. No yeah. One. No, we, you need to be need, able. You need, need, you need lo- to be able to more zoom in and see our acne. To <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, I know Ven has a business account, and I do here too. So. Um, oh yeah, you see, this is a beautiful thing. Is I'm sitting on bonded four channels, and they're like, "Yeah, you know, Seven Up. That's the best we can do, man." Like Why? really? That's just horrible. I mean, here what they what they do is, yeah, you can get a hundred megabit up, but you got to pay four hundred dollars a month. <laughs> oh no, so, no, it's not even you know? an option. <laughs> the, the only thing I can do is if they roll fiber to my house and I pay for it. Oh. So we actually have yeah, the see, gigabit on cable here, mm-hmm. um, but it's only if you want to pay I, for I, it. I to, it's like five hundred. Well, I mean, it's not going to be a bad thing at all once you see Doxus 3.1 deployments. Oh, yeah. Well, which which, which, which I got, because I got the 200 uh, megabit cable, which is kind of nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. My, my, mind you, it, it gets a little dicey once you start going over 100 megabits because of some hardware flaws in the modem that they ship, but... Really? Yeah. yeah. No, I, I've, talk, I've talked about that before. Oh. Like, um... At like uh, at operating at over a hundred megabits, uh, specific UDP and ICMP traffic will just like not get transmitted. I mean, I've not had a it'll, problem. It'll it'll, it'll 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 just drop the drop that traffic because of like some cleanup mm-hmm. task in the Intel Atom CPU. Oh, yeah, yeah I guess. I yeah, it's like it's that. like a straight up hardware flaw. So I, I, I yeah. really got to admit, going from eighty to one hundred and twenty four, you don't really notice the difference. Mm-hmm. No, but like, e- even going from like fifty to two hundred, checking out stuff from the uh, local video store is like, okay, I'm gonna start it and then I'm gonna go to the other. Oh, it's done. Okay. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's really cute when you start up Steam. You're like, oh, I wonder what's down. Li-. All right, it's done. Yeah. Yeah, Pedro died. He uh, mm-hmm. he'll be back after we do what we did to the horse to him. <laughs> Beat him with the stick. That, oh yes, hi Treggy, hi Linux Ganuru and Katana Steel. <laughs> Yay! How are the fiber baboons yeah. treating you, Linux Ganuru? I think they're asleep. It's like eleven. It's like eleven o'clock at night in Tanzania. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and Steve husband, uh, were you able to take a nice break from work so you could <laughs> could watch your waifu <laughs> on LGC? <laughs> and it's like I didn't have a choice. <laughs> yes. Either I watch this, or she <laughs> takes much. me for all I'm worth. It's cheaper than fifty percent. All right. Yeah. What? <laughs> okay, you are on Kevin. Right on. Kevin's a oh, lucky man. Oh, I think that might be. That might be Brent, my brother-in-law, Kevin Reinecker. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> you, you'll probably see a lot of uh, people not with uh, normal IRC names. <laughs> I sent oh, out an damn. email to all my they, family and friends, they, and and a lot of them don't have never used IRC. So hmm. that was a great time to learn how to start using a technology that peaked in the nineties. Yes. <laughs> Actually, uh, technically the 80s and on BBSs. <laughs> mm. Before the internets. Before the web, I should say. Oh, that's right. I remember. And, 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 hence why I said peaked. Ooh, yes. No, not, very, very ooh. true. <laughs> I got to load the credits. I'm yeah. glad I remember that. That was fun last week. Oh, yeah. So they got the announcement out for the, the Hades Canyon... Intel AMD Fuso chips. Oh really? Yeah, they're putting they're putting they're starting to put them in like those Intel NUX. Oh, I think I saw a screenshot of that. Yeah. It's got the skull on it. Yeah, yeah. 
Mm. But it doesn't. It doesn't tell me. It does not tell me what kind of GPU they're kind of bolting onto that Intel CPU. A RAID. Wait, hold hold on. A RAID zero and a RAID one capable SDXC slot. What the hell? <laughs> I'm a, oh, yeah, no. I, I need I need high throughput on my Intel AMD Vega card. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put two SD cards and I'm gonna RAID them. It could happen. I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm just saying it's stupid. <laughs> well, it is Intel. But, you know, when you have yeah. as much money as Intel, you can afford a few stupid. Oh, well, oh, that's actually kind of nice because the, the new ones have dual gigabit NICs, so you could use it as, like, a router box or something. That's, a, that's an expensive router box. Uh, yeah. It, it is... Router slash steed box slash whatever. It can do many things and become a massive attack vector for your house. Why did you buy a thread ripper? I use it as a switch. They're calling it the VR machine. Oh, geez. Oh, great. You can buy a blue HTC Vive, which we're going to address on Saturday's show. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean Vive, Vive's <laughs> solution to the... Uh, to the VR market uh, issue is, hey, we're just going to slash price to move units because as long as people are talking about our stuff, we can claim relevancy. Now, never never mind that all the interesting advances are happening over on HTC's side. Mind you, I think that's what's going to kill the Vive is there's going to be too much innovation and no releases. Yeah, because you got to imagine when you're going over to this new hardware and the new display... It's not going to be as simple as upbooping the resolution, you know. Mm hmm. Router, Cody, Steambox, Meh. Things happen. All right, how are we going to do this rundown? You just want to hand it off, Jill? Do you want one? Okay, let's see here. Oh, I'll do a yeah. I'll do the third one. <laughs> third one. All right. Oh, all right. <laughs> so, so what? Fen, me, Jill, Fen. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Let me put a yeah. bow on it, so I'll be able to take us out and lead us back in. Yeah. Hi, Pennywise. And, and Mag. <laughs> Whoa. Who's attacking what? Oh. There's, there's the culprit. <laughs> yeah. My... There it is. Keep at it. You, you'll eventually saw through the <laughs> desk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually want to get a, a, a smaller, little smaller screen here. It's kind of in the way. Oh, you mean it works? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it does make with the working. It's, it's like, oh, no, it covers up your face. It don't matter. Put some googly <laughs> eyes on the other end of it. Yeah. yeah. As long as it works. <laughs> no, it does. <laughs> All right, I'm about ready. I guess I'm going to... Grab a refill and see if I get the show on the road now. Hmm? Yeah. Okay. Then, then Jordan can not play with this dude. You can take the switch with you on the pods, right? I can. Yeah. I'm. Not, I'm not playing with it right now. It's, it's like off. Oh no no! I, I I was trying to think in the future after the show. I was like, wait a minute, because I was like, so Jordan can run off and play with the switch. I was like, wait, no, he's got to go to the gym. And I was like, but wait, you can take the switch with you. And get in a I horrible gym-related accident because you were playing with a switch. Oh, dude, I'm not taking this shit outside. <laughs> <laughs> it's a four hundred dollar console. It's staying indoors. Blue. It's like doop doop doop. Oh, hey, Mr. Mm -hmm. Switch, have you met my friend, Mr. Snowbank? You can you can stay there. Mm. Sleep over for the night. Be good. All right, give me a second and. Um...
We'll get going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mir, cool. You got another uh, cheap monitor. That's awesome. We'll use f- for for next year's scale <laughs> or yeah, I, other events. I, I, I don't think this counts as a heretic purchase because it's still BSD. No, no Microsoft is being run on this at all. Is that a, a tablet, Jordan? It's so pixelated, I can't uh, tell. It's a, it's a Nintendo Switch. Oh, it's the Nintendo 64. You finally you got one. Okay, cool. Yeah, the, I remember the, you were talking the 64. about it. Awesome. Hmm? Yeah. Or uh, Switch. Gonna I'm sorry. Gonna, 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 <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, no, no, it, it, no, it's the portable Nintendo 64. I'm totally going to play some OG Smash on there. Yes, some Paper I Mario, figured, some, yeah. some Turok. <laughs> Hmm. See, they, they, I mean, they have enough buttons on this thing that they actually should start like porting in 64 games onto here via virtual console. Because then, uh... <laughs> yay! Yeah. Now, now my brother-in-law Kevin is known as Derland Productions. That's the animation house um, that I've done a lot of work for, and what, what my brother-in-law kind of stuff runs. Do they animate? <laughs> What kind, Everything. what kind of stuff do they animate? Uh, theatrical trailers, uh, commercials, um, mm. large displays for Qualcomm. <laughs> Riveting conversation going on, I see. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I, I, I don't know. I thought Jill had some more to say after that sentence. Oh. <laughs> I lost my train of thought a little bit because I was no. following chat. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, yeah, and Sharon, let me tell you chat here. Chat goes to all... some places. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's about 70 degrees Fahrenheit here. It's a beautiful day <laughs> here in SoCal. <laughs> I have no idea what 70 degrees Fahrenheit is. Yeah. <laughs> According to Google, thank you. Yeah, I have to do the conversions myself because I twenty-one point one 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 Yes, Mr. Alert, you can. That's what sign yep. players are. All right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, um, sit back, fasten your seatbelts. We are about to explode. Okay, so... I just exploded. I have the last one. Do I have, what do I have? The first one, last one? What? Wait. Yeah, you have the first one and the last one. Got it. <clears throat> All right. Let me see. Let's kill that recording. Let's back that up. Let's get Jack up and running. Four inputs. Recording through a door, plus two more. Stop. And click and clock. That'll teach it. All right. Kumbuntu has patched Meltdown. SourceForge gets a facelift. Cheat your way to running Linux on a 486. And has GNOME gone clear? Hmm, I don't know, but I do know. It is another great day for Linux, everyone. So let's go. Is this going to be the episode where both of you constantly attack your microphones and desk? Dubstep. It's going to be great. 
It's going to be great. Yeah. I love it. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back and take that midweek break to talk about just some of the things that, hey, man, we, you know, we just kind of found interesting and we want to talk about them. Hope you find them fascinating. You might know that I have been abandoned. Nay, I'm just left alone. But two people have uh, joined me. Uh, first one is Jill from uh, Linux Chicks LA. Hey, what's going on? Thank you so much for showing up and replacing Pedro, who noped out on us because he's a horrible person. Aw. <laughs> well, thank you very much for having me. I've been promising for several years, and I, <laughs> I, I'm finally here. <laughs> and and no. um, yeah, <laughs> so it's a thing. <laughs> Super sweet. And you know him, you love him if you watch our Saturday show all the way from Space Canada in Torontosville. Uh, Master Sveg, he, he's here. Oh. Hello, I'm I, I'm clearly not Pedro Mateus, as my lower third indicates. <laughs> it, it seems legit. You you know, old man Ben. Uh, but I do know that you're struggling. Uh, the cruel thing is, is he has a switch that he can't play with right now, and I kind of got, got the feels yeah. for it. Got the feels. This guy at five is seventy is eighty bucks, Ooh. and I and I just pulled the trigger on that, and now now I have hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of gameplay too. Oh wait, me. Uh, mm. It's gonna. It's rip, rip Jordan. Rip Jordan. Sounds like a fun time, man. All right, so let's get right into this business. We promise you, we're not going to spend the entire episode talking about Meltdown and Intel and AMD and all that. So uh, let's talk about Meltdown uh, in Ubuntu because. Hey, they've updated some things, but I do want to give this a quick mention with Spectre, the Meltdown, and the vulnerabilities. It's been patched. It's a thing. You can get it. Uh, the world is not burning. And patch your uh, shite, I guess I should say, because by the time you're listening to this, it, everything should be good. 1710, 1604 LTS, 1404 LTS, 1204 ESM. Woo. Yeah, that's only if you're part of the Ubuntu Advantage. Give us money and we'll still update your stuff. Yeah. Uh yeah, can canonical can't afford an IPO update. Yeah, uh, I think I think they pushed out the uh, Fedora updates this week as well. The thing with the, the Ubuntu stuff though is, is it's not live patchable, so you're going to have to schedule some downtime if you're running Ubuntu in production. Ivan, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, there's going to be a couple um, additional uh, uh, Intel microcode and AMD microcode updates that are coming down the pipe as well to address what is widely considered to be the dark souls of CPU issues. Mm. Well, no, man. I mean, it was like a little bug that's only been around since like 1995. Jill, do you think this has been blown out of proportion or is everyone right to be terrified, petrified and or stupefied? I think it's been blown out of proportion, really. <laughs> but you just, just got to patch things and you're fine. It's uh yeah. You just, it, you just got to be happy eating that 50% uh, performance hit on a couple loads. Yeah, I, I've not yeah, seen... Yeah, that, that's the only downside. Yeah. Is, uh, yeah uh, Linus has said 20 to 50% on some applications. Uh, yeah, that's not good. Yeah, and, it, and it's, it's all, it's all going to be... It's all going to be enterprise critical stuff too, like um, mm -hmm. virtualization because this is a big virtual memory attack. So yes. that's, that's, that's going to be fun. Docker. And most, most, most running... But yeah, most running hypervisors are using an Intel CPU. This will probably change now that Threadripper has just thrown the glove in Intel's face. But at least until that hardware refresh happens, every everybody's vulnerable. It's great. It's fun time. Well, yeah. and you mm -hmm. should point out that Intel released some Linux-specific microcode updates today. So mm -hmm. it'll get sorted. Things will get better. And uh, tomorrow you will still wake up. But... If you wanted, have you ever just wanted to pseudo a script that you downloaded off the internet and just see what it did? I recommend people do that all the time. Just don't don't read anything. Just curl whatever dot bash, mm -hmm. pipe it into bash, pseudo pseudo bash even, and have fun. Well, I mean, hey, if you you can alias uh, YOLO to pseudo if you want. Spectre meltdown, meltdown checker. I saw this posted on R Linux. And, uh, yeah, I always wanted to pseudo random scripts from the internet myself. Basically, this is going to be like, yeah, you, if your CPU was made after 1995, you're vulnerable. And, um, yeah, I really don't know what to say to this. I think, uh, who was it? Yeah, it, it, it uh, was it Steven 
Or the, who who said Rome wasn't built in a day, but this thing was? Look at the. I think Stevo. Stevo did that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. It, it's messy. Basically, what this does is it crawls through like your proc uh, partition mm -hmm. and looks looks for any flags that would indicate that you have a vulnerable um, CPU or the vulnerable CPU hardware. And that's basically it. It's pretty sketchy, uh, and it's a long ass script for doing not very much, to be honest. Do you think it's mining the bitcoins or something along? Those? No. Well, I'm, I'm I'm like going through it, and it's like, oh yeah, and we're loading random kernel modules. Wait, why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. What 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 potential? Thing are you hoping to glean here by just loading random stuff into my running kernel? I, I, I don't know. You, you you mentioned that it's not going to really pass a lint check either. But yeah, I mean, it, it's not. It's I got as far as this thing requires root privileges to run, and it, it just disappeared. Because like I said, if CPUs made after ninety five, you're dealing with branch protection unless you have a Raspberry Pi. We'll talk more about that in the Raspberry Pi section. Uh, you're mm -hmm. vulnerable. Deal with it. I mean, this is a massive hardware issue jill have you downloaded this have you ran it or just just not your cup of tea um i actually was gonna download and run it to test some of my old pentium pros because that that's that's the 1995 is is when the, they came into being and so mm. a lot of my machines are pentium pro so i was just i'm gonna do it because i'm curious <laughs> well i think the pentium pros were the first that would be sub, sub, uh, susceptible with, yeah uh, yeah that's what it's saying <laughs> I'm I'm actually more shocked that you haven't melted them down for the precious metal inside of Aww. them. But <laughs> no, they were my precious workstations. That's that's uh, they were my workhorses for years. Right on, <laughs> right on. And now uh, they're your coffee tables for years later. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very thirsty. Uh, Linux Mint, Jordan. What's it about? Never heard of it. Eighteen point three. Oh man, Linux Mint, everyone, it's my favorite operating system because I love, you know, distributions that just take packages from other distributions and then call themselves a new thing. And now oh, this, this is Linux Mint. Uh, they, have a, they have a new version out. Um, they have the, they're basing on, they're based on the latest and greatest Ubuntu LTS as they are often want to do. Um, I guess the big news here is that uh, GNOME is not an available installer option anymore, so you're stuck with their Cinnamon, which is basically GNOME 3 with some extra stuff tacked onto it, or Mate, which is GNOME 2 with GTK3 bindings. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I have I have no opinion on this one way or another, because I, I, I don't use it. Yeah. Who, who do you think, Joe? Mate, I, 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 I don't know. Mate, maybe someone here does? <laughs> Yes, actually, um, I use Linux Mint a lot to test my computer builds because, the, the for one, it installs in under five minutes from a USB flash drive. It is, it is the fastest, one of the fastest installing uh, distros out there. And I just, I boot from flash drive to test my builds. And it's a really good uh, distro for new users. Uh, Cinnamon is very easy to do coming from Windows, easy to use. So, um um, yeah, I, I actually don't run it on my systems 24, 24 seven. It's, it's more for, for testing and, and to recommend to new users. Yeah. That's one thing I want to ask you about because mint was everyone's, it was the hot new sparkly for a hot, not even a hot minute for several years. It, it was mm -hmm. the, it's what everyone championed behind. It was the arch of its day. Yeah. You know, everyone just ran mint and it was the thing. I I I don't think it, that that's a fair comparison. I think it was sort of like the new Ubuntu cuz for a while people were like, "Oh, if you want to run Linux and you're a new person, you should use Ubuntu." And then another, another Ubuntu derivative took that crown and that was Linux Mint. The, like you I said, it's a, you... effectively a wicked easy uh Linux distribution for Windows users like Arch. Uh, yeah, Cinnamon uh, was in response to Unity, actually, the fail of Unity <laughs> when when it started on Ubuntu. So it... it uh, I, I thought, it, I thought we, Cinnamon we, was more of like a, like a GNOME 3 response, like, oh, here's a version of GNOME 3 well, that that's true. functions yeah. a lot more like GNOME 2. Yeah, but it, 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 it became popular when uh, Unity became a, th a thing on Ubuntu. So once they took GNOME away, and then... then um, Jill. Jill, Unity never became a thing. <laughs> 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 
this is true. <laughs> At least not for me. <laughs> Even yeah. Canonical tapped out. They're like, yeah, we're going back to no. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, they're just starting to come to terms with that. It's like, yeah, maybe you're we wrong about Upstart. Maybe you're we wrong about System D. Hey, maybe you're we wrong about Mirror. Hey, man, also <laughs> want to throw a little love to uh, Mate Mate with a... Uh, yeah, that's a solid piece of kit. Uh, Martin. Mm-hmm. He, he's dealing Mar- with that. Mar- Mar- Marty Martin. I mean, I looked yeah. at the mint uh, at the end of the day. It's 1604 with a body kit on it, and there's nothing wrong with that. If that's your thing, rock on. And then again, I, I couldn't really get plussed, non-plussed anything with Gnome not shipping because it's Linux. Just install it. It takes two seconds. You know, it's 1604. Mm-hmm. Getting Gnome up and running is pretty pretty quick but but you see yeah who would want to use gnome now that you can't have those pesky icons on your desktop anymore <laughs> oh man it's wait is that what we got up next yeah it is yeah that's what we got up next <laughs> buy me some time yeah, so see, buy see, me see, some time son yeah i i, I got that smooth transition skills man <laughs> five years and now now i can pivot from story to story all right yeah uh gnome uh desktop icons are removed in the latest gnome 328 that is um yeah, p- apparently you are no longer able to do that. I'm pretty sure you can turn that back on via like GNOME tweak tools, though, because at least when GNOME 3 first came out, they didn't have desktop icons enabled by default. You needed to turn them on. There was some... I, I, I don't know. GNOME uses like this weird registry stuff for their configuration. I'm not particularly a fan of it, but there was a, little, a nice little GUI called GNOME tweak tools that would enable you to turn that back on. Um, apparently, they're still going to have like a GNOME shell extension... To uh, pe- for people who want to have desktop icons, I think uh, is it just me or is like your desktop basically just to be sorted folder? Mm, uh, you're saying it's kind of like warm storage. A, a little bit. Like I, I'll, I'll, I'll put stuff on the desktop if I like need to refer to a file like immediately. Mm-hmm. But then that's usually usually goes to like another folder or just gets deleted. Jill, what's your layout like? Yeah, I do not use icons at all. I like a very, very, very clean uh, window manager. And in fact, mostly I use Flexbox or Window Maker. So I, I like to right click on the desktop and get all my menus. <laughs> I like very so clean you, you you also you also do like the crazy multi monitor stuff, right? So do you do have like yeah. crazy wallpapers and you just don't want to disrupt the artwork? Correct. Appreciate <laughs> yes. it. Yes. <for> and the, <laughs> <yeah>. yes. <laughs> Yeah, it um, doesn't really bother me when the uh, something has went incredibly wrong in my life if I'm using GNOME, I'll be honest about that. And here's the thing, I, I do use some desktop icons. I'm sure if you follow me on social media, you've seen my desktop enough to be sick of it. It's basically one line down the left side, and um, I have a couple of SSDs and a folder or two, just stuff we use for this show. But outside of that... Because I, I I went on a tear when desktop icons were introduced into XFCE. I mean, this was mm. like, oh, this is expletive deleted. Who needs desktop icons? Because I was a right click on the desktop. That's how you open things, or you put everything in a launcher at the bottom. 2018, I got to be honest with you. I don't care one way or the other. It's like, use what you want, man. I, I don't see. Now, then again, in all fairness... This is stupid because, but this is also GNOME and GNOME as a project. I love you, but you, you lot have been doing things that have both angered and confused me for the better part of two decades. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. No, GNOME tends to honey badger a lot of questionable stuff and say, mm-hmm. we're, we're going to do this way. And if you have any objections to it, well, I don't, I, I don't, I don't even dignify you with response anymore. I don't, I don't recognize it. I, I think I think there was there was that infamous uh, no mailing list thread where someone's like, well, XFCE does this, and the guy's like, I don't know what an XFCE is. Oh boy. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't I don't run no myself. I really don't care for the new version, and I and I actually I, I haven't ran m- no much myself. <laughs> I like the lightweight window managers. Who needs I, window I, manager? You know- Go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, I actually, I, I actually was liking GNOME 3 for a while, but then they just started changing things for the sake of changing things. And it seems like they really do. They really have this nebulous vision of the, what they want the desktop experience to be, except it's like a hazy vision when you like squint your eyes like this and you can't quite see 
what's in front of you and they're like yeah yeah it's this but what if we take this away yeah yeah no but what if we add these three things mm -hmm. that no one cares about take some more stuff away it i don't know it it seems like they lack focus or like to me it does come across as some people trying to be clever with ux design that have no business messing with ux design i really wish i had recorded I've, oh, that day I was like, I'm getting 4.413 XFCE, which is not an official thing, but up and building. I had to use GNOME, the latest GNOME. I'm saying PTSD for comedic effect, but that's as close as to what I think it might actually be when I had to launch GNOME. I was like, w no, no, this is wrong. What is this? And I could see what they were trying to do, and it was wrong. Um, who needs all this graphical whiz-bang stuff when we have uh, text, Jill? Oh, yes. Now, this is an, um, <laughs> a wonderful alternative to using links or e-links in uh, your, your Linux terminal. And um, it's not the pretty, prettiest looking way to use Firefox, but it does work. And you can watch and YouTube videos on it, apparently. Yes, you can. Uh, the, and you can yeah, you can. Yeah. This, guy, this guy's and watching Gangnam Style, to, I think. Yeah. And you don't have to use AA Lib or CACA Lib to do it also, <laughs> which is awesome. Now, I think this is a really, really neat, neat project. And I, I did install it, and, it and it does work very well. Okay, well, uh, there, uh, I was just going to say there, there is a two note. This is all, this is all running out of Docker, so you're going to need that installed. Also, apparently, the pre built version they, um, they provide does not work on AMD CPUs, so you're going to have to rebuild it from source. Mm. Yeah, but... it's, it's relatively simple because it's just a docker build command but mm -hmm. still it's an added step if you're on team red okay uh, help me out with this outside the, this this 100% neat I mean this is absolutely going to give this a try but I always like to sit back and just try as a thought exercise practical use Jill Help me find a practical use for this. <laughs> there isn't one. It's it's more for fun. Um, yeah. <laughs> so you, you you take an old computer that just has terminal on it and just have fun. <laughs> oh oh, I, I I have a weird one. If you're going to be installing Oracle database and you don't have the ability to X forward, mm -hmm. and you don't have a pre-configured answer file, you need to go through the uh, GUI installer. So if you're on a headless box. This might be might be useful. No. Oh, and you can access your Gmail. No. Yeah. I mean, you you can do that. You can do that through MUT too. Yes, you can. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm mm -hmm. just thinking, like right now, if I was in a position to hire um, an employee or an intern and buy them like a 37, 38 inch ultra wide 4 UHD display for their new PC and just have this running, and that's all they could deal with it <laughs> that, that's just well see that, that that's the challenge right do that do they just sit there and take it or do they just install something else because they can because it's linux no no without the uh passwords they won't be installing anything maybe um so this is neat uh satellites you like tracking them this is coming from libra space you can find all this business in our show notes along with everything else this is a cool little tool i mean it lets you track overhead satellites as much as one can expect uh as a civilian yeah, not, not 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 the fun ones not the fun ones my first thought was like hey man can this track items that are currently in the ocean hashtag zuma uh just little updates they finished the migration to gtk3 and an update to the satellite data and yeah g what is it g predict i guess you would say yeah, yeah g, g predict g predict predict i always do that wrong but that's cool because i know there's apps that show current planes you know and flights and all that but mm -hmm. yeah this is like some next level kerbals type stuff i guess i've never been that curious but if you are um kind of worried about satellites falling on you i don't know what is but but and and that's that's the thing though like this lets you track the registered satellites not the not the sketchy black ops satellites or like Google Satellite Cannon that like beams a, like a tracking laser on you every time you use Google Maps. I don't know, man. Maybe uh, it has like one of those things like Electron does, like developer mode. It actually goes into the uh, satellites that aren't up there. Uh, oh, that that would be miserable if this was an Electron app, or if those if those like special satellites are running Electron. Ugh. 
Why, do, why, why does my satellite need to run Chrome? Oh, I, man, I don't know. They're probably running embedded Windows. I mean, it's... Probably won't oh, argue that's... against that. But hey, man, uh, that's that. We're going to have a little discussion about SourceForge. You know, everyone's mm. golden child of... Uh, net, yeah, I'm just lying to you people. Um <laughs> it was where you went to download emulators back in the day. Way back in the day. Uh, check it out. The new SourceForge. They gave it a facelift. I'm not joking. They've also created a GitHub and Porter tool, which I think is completely hilarious. However, Jordan, you disagree. I I don't I don't think it's absolutely hilarious. I think there's definitely a use for it if you're going to use GitHub for like your source management and then SourceForge for your binary distribution. Mm -hmm. You could totally because I, I I read th I read through their documentation just to just to see what it could actually do, and yeah, you can you can totally just have like releases that are automatically built built from GitHub hosted on uh, on SourceForge. So if you if you wanted to sort of play to each platform's strengths, that is definitely a thing you can do though. But Oh man, SourceForge, they have they have a lot of bad reputation to answer for these days. Like they they have their new fancy web 2.0, they're ripping off like the GitHub um mm -hmm. sort of color scheme. Uh yeah, I'm not sure that this is going to be a thing they can absolutely recover from. They have like I said, they have a lot of stuff to answer for. They and absolutely do, man. Um listen, first off, I'm going to say for uh, more options, more better. 100% behind that. I guess you could say having a GitHub backup, you know, you could use that the same way we use YouTube. We don't ac ac expect people to watch it, but it's free off-site backup. I'm not charging anything for it. Mm -hmm. However, riddle me this, is I, I personally believe, you know, for the love of Flying Spaghetti Monster, they need to get rid of the SourceForge name that is tainted it is bad. It is beyond tainted. And no manner of any any lacquery hairdo, sparkly cowboy boots, fancy mustache, uh, rhinestones, you're not there's nothing you can put on this source forge thing that's ever going to change that. It it has got the previous and I know it was the previous owners. Current owners current owner, I've seen him in the Reddits and on uh, and on the slash dots talking about it. He's like, Man, we still got like over a million uniques and all these projects. Uh, that's great. Listen to the, listen, I'm the voice of reason and sanity. Something's horribly wrong. Change the name to something else other than source forge. It's I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, Jill, what's your, what's your take on it? Oh, it's just been so hard to see such a stalwart website and open source community get so bad. Uh, we can only hope that this will let it recover just a little bit, but I think it's too late, unfortunately. And, you know, back in yeah. the day, we kind of used this, like, it was kind of used a lot like GitHub. It was a place that you could go and find new open source projects. Mm -hmm. And I used to use it all the time and still do. But now you, you get all the ads. It's just... It's well, they just have, they anymore. removed the downloads, you know, the adware downloads the, that they were the, packing the, in. The, the yes. The buttons, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And they did. They yeah. quit bundling, you know, GIMP with something else they've said some yeah, sketchy yahoo thing. toolbar or some garbage yeah 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 I, I i mean i've i'm kind of on the fence with the name change thing because on the one hand people actually know what the hell a source forge is if they we're we're we're, we're s'more sporge now okay cool i'm just gonna go back to using github hmm. well, yeah. just like everyone else that was the thing. I wanted to give it a mention. Uh, maybe they're going to do something with it. Uh, it's. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm with you, Jill. I remember using it back source forge. I remember fresh meat? That was the thing too. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and that's well, another reason why I use actually Ting. Ting, uh, the mobile carrier, mm -hmm. is um, NVMe, came from yeah. fresh meat. Not NVMe. NVMe. No. Yeah. 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 <laughs> which which is all owned by two cows now. Mm. Yes. Correct. <laughs> That is a thing. Before we get out of here, um, some kids, they, they need to get off of our collective lawns because one of their science projects was to make the 486 great again. And um, this came from Arthur and he added it to our show notes, which is something patriots can do. All right. Let's just do roundtable. What did they do? They got a what an older distribution running on that looks like a PS2 compatible something or another. And they get getting yeah, they're, Gentoo they're, they're, up and running on. They're using down yeah, small Linux. Yeah. So tell me about it. Yeah. 
anyone. <laughs> no, or, no, we're, we're just going to sit here in silence for five minutes, and that's going to be the story. <laughs> All right. Um, it, it, the, it's the it's like a, Andy Warhol a little piece. bit on my end. Sorry about that. You know, I, I ran a 486 <laughs> way back in the day with Linux on it, and granted, it might have been a router, so I'll say that. Uh, Jordan, it seems like they were kind of roundabout doing this business, because I say if you want to get the credit for this, they need a stack of Slackware floppies, dial-up modem, and all access to any major search engine or minor search engine. Uh, they, they can only use well, archive.org. They can use search.com from that period and uh, Hotbot. Man, and man. But yeah, uh, here, here, here's the thing. They cheated. Um, they did not compile everything on this 486 because according to them, it would take forever. I say get back to me after the fifth failed 24-hour GCC compile on your single core like 800 megahertz arm v5 tell with like half a half a gig of ram and loading on an sd card which is about the same power as one of these 486s um but yeah they, they used the, they used the thinkpad t430 to cross compile uh everything um and then they just used they downloaded the default gen 2 footprint loaded it on there installed lilo that that's a that's a bit of a blast from the past mm -hmm. uh we love lilo, lilo. <laughs> yeah but mm -hmm. Start use, using uh, compact flashcard as a go between. Uh, yeah, so they 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 eventually got it working. They got it running in text mode. I wonder if they could run that uh, SSH and uh, SSH ASCII based uh, X server that we covered in the previous story. That'd be that would be an interesting um, thing. They they document how they uh, pulled in some old patches from um, some older uh, kernels just to uh, just to get specific hardware working. Uh, and yeah, that, that's, that's it. It's, it's a neat little science project for the kids, but I really feel they should have sweat a little bit more through it. Yeah. You know, they were trying to go for the latest and greatest, but you can, there is another distro called Anti-X or Antix. That's a Debian based small distro for older computers. And it runs on 386s and 486s. And in fact, uh, we use that to, uh, install, install on um, old laptops for um, the kids on computers projects with the Linux Chicks LA. And um, mm. it's really good for that. It's, it's, it's the most update Debian that you can put on uh, the 486. And I have several 486s and some with uh, Debian on them. And I have damn small Linux on one. And um, I often boot them with uh, Linux on a floppy it was the first Linux mm -hmm. distro with an X window manager and it works perfectly fine on my 486 and, and my 386s. Right on. <laughs> I mean, it's Sorry. a fun experiment. I, I think, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I agree with Jordan cheating a little bit, cheating a little bit, but that's cool. But they're, they're eating so many pumpkins. What with their being cheater cheaters. Hey man, maybe they can, uh, play with some loud pumpkins this is something i tossed together uh, how to increase that recording volume on well basically if you're using pulse this is how we do it i also have some jack running in there just kind of showing you that business because one of the issues you might run into is it doesn't go to 11 with your recording syncs with pulse audio you'll have 100 percent, 150 percent at max and you might have a very low input and you need just a little bit more. This is a way to do it with a PA man, Pulse Audio Manager. Pop in there. This is a, what, three-minute long video. It'll get you in, get you out, get it done. And Bob will, in fact, be your uncle at the end of the day. And you will have louder audio. Um, it'll make you happy. It'll, it'll make you the cool kid in uh, class. Not really, but... It'll, it'll at least make you the loud kid in class. It'll make you the loud kid. Yeah, have that extra loud video that sounds horrible. And that is something I mention in that guide is you're just amplifying what's going in there. So be, be on the lookout for the room noise and everything else that's involved. Jill, uh, do you, you, you've worked with audio on Linux once or twice, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, in fact, in fact, for for this show and my future endeavors with Linux Gamecast, I set up an XLR mic um, going into um, an old 1990s PCI uh, uh, sound card called the Digigram. And 
it um, it actually has the opposite. It, it came in way too loud, so I have to monitor it with VU meters and whatnot because it's very, very powerful. So Oh, I'd bring up the soldering iron and throw some resistors in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those, uh, I, was, I, was, I was gonna say, do you, do you get the well. additional warmth and hum from mm -hmm. running running a ISA thirty two bit sound card? Yes, <laughs> we, we we did. Tr true story. We ran a nineties sound card, like probably for the first fifty shows like we did. Yeah. Oh, awesome! Yeah. It was like an AWE sixty four PCI sound blaster, old school. Oh, okay, yeah. All sixty fours were great. I had the thirty two, the sixty four. They were great sound those, cards. those were good, but fortunately, we were able to upgrade, and uh, we were only able to do that with your support. Uh, thank you, everyone, who support not just this show, but uh, what we do on Saturday, which is a lot more, a little more edgier, Linux Gamecast Weekly. Uh, if you like what we do, you you like this. Um, what, what is it? A dog and pony show, Jordan? Is, is that a fair way to call it? <laughs> I I I, th I think there's a couple more ponies than dogs. Also, they might be dead. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, we got all sorts of wonderful links that you can click and enter your credit card number through. It's gonna be great. Uh, ex except those bottom two QR codes. Those have no credit cards involved. And there's also that the Patreon thing we do. Patreon.com/slash Linux Gamecast. It's the thing that funds this very show. The thing that you were watching right now would not exist without your continued support. We got a bunch of people giving us uh, money. Uh, what's what's the Patreon at? So I've missed that number. As I furiously scroll back up, 107 beautiful party patrons making this possible, stopping us. Now, listen, we never wanted to do ads. We don't have to do ads, and that's because all of you, we're about to be throwing up a big, stinking new goal. I'm, I'm not even going to announce it. I'm just going to be that guy and tease you about it just a little mm. bit. Uh, something that's probably going to start on Friday, and it is going to be the first uh, pinky toe organ in the water of kind of the real secret reason we built out this studio. More on that later, but now we're asking 16 quarters a month. You get access to our Discord. That's rocking in there. Early access to show notes. You get your name in the credits. Stick around. Check that out. Same day access to all of our live uncut VODs, reserve spots, free game streams that we do. And hey, man, you can buy your way on the show if you want. But hey, but wait, there's more, Jordan, because we do an extra show that only patrons get to listen to every week. Yeah, it's the pre pre super shows, and it happens. We were, it's the production meeting that happens pre LGC weekly. Mm -hmm. You get to be a fly on the wall, you get to hear us talk about all sorts of crazy crap that you have to actually pay money to get. Uh, if you want to get that incriminating uh, footage slash audio recording. And I do have a but little it's... bit of surprising news. I think everyone knows that normally Frank is at choir practice on Wednesdays. But this is our 100th <laughs> show. So Frank showed up. He made it. He made it. He's, he, he's going to go to um, choir practice this evening. They've rescheduled it. I just kind of wish he'd get into something a bit more mainstream like voodoo. But that's for all the beautiful people who have picked us, including Jill and Steve. <laughs> that's our fine, upstanding cannibal wool. That's why it's called that, people with dirty minds. And we have Bradley, Erod, uh, Mikkel G, John M. I can't read Linux New, Clocky Estivo, at the Admiral JT, Mir, Trugs, Frenchy, Luchers.net. Go check that out. NMAG, Dan W, and J. It's kind of brilliant. And uh, you guys have helped us build out this studio which we still got a gang of shit on oh, i mean stuff oh man it's been a while since i party fell I didn't, I didn't do it this week Whoa. i'm gonna yeah. wash my mouth out with a lollipop of pie jordan what do we got yeah. this week uh we, we we got some meat pies on sticks apparently no we got uh hydra zero this is a thing for uh 3d printers using uh, raspberry pies i didn't read the story because it looked like jill took it so i'm gonna hand it off to her <laughs> Yeah, so this is so you can set up a, a controller board with your your printer and uh, make it do do ki uh, all kinds of wonderful things. One is uh, uh, checking your uh, checking the print time on a, a smartwatch uh, was one of the projects I found, and another one was, uh, was making the three D printer blink with all all uh, lots of RGB goodness. <laughs> so that's a fun one. But there's been a lot of really cool projects for uh, for uh, 
Um, What's this? Why am I looking at Batman? What's going on here? What's up? Joe? Yeah, that was interesting. That was... uh, um, Oh, you, you, don't, you don't need a reason for Batman. It, Batman just yeah. appears. He has uh, the knife. Yeah. I don't know, man. It says, here's an octo print project to RGB all the things, and I thought there might be a story behind it. Apparently, I was incorrect in that <laughs> assumption. No, it was just, it was just making, it, it was just being able to change the colors on the printer. <laughs> Case modding it, essentially. All right, that's pretty cool. <laughs> That's it was just neat. fun because everyone likes to RGB all the things. No, they don't. <laughs> um, hey, AMD, I'll give you. I'll, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'll give you a little bit of credit, but I'm, this is nothing to do with the Raspberry Pi. But you announced your new Wraith Max Turbo Yellow Swag Cooler. Your second feature was blinky LED. You know what? Fifth feature was like goth emo mode for RGB haters. I'm not kidding. This was on the promotional material, like. I, I don't say that. Hey, man, uh, your Raspberry Pi is stupid. It's so dumb it can't even uh, do branch protection. Well, it, it's it's a little, a little. It's not paid enough to look into the future. So this is this is a post from the Raspberry Pi blog. Link to all this stuff is in our show notes. Evan Upton, who I've had very very long intimidating conversations with, uh, wrote this up, and it basically explains why the Raspberry Pi is not vulnerable to Spectre or Meltdown. And it basically goes through how the things work in very convoluted example. It's very, very thorough, though. I highly recommend you give this a look. It explains what a side channel attack is. And the conclusion is that because uh, the Cortex A7 and A53, which is what the Raspberry Pis are based off of, do not have speculative branch prediction, uh, in addition to not caching as aggressively, are not vulnerable to these uh, spe- me- meltdown specter bugs. Hmm. That being said, uh, other AH64 CPUs are definitely. Um, there's going to be some OS patching involved. Um, Zom, it's the end of the world. We're, we're lit- Meltdown is literally going to melt all of our faces if you touch a computer. Well, I think so it's, it's very fair to like say. Jones. I- any arm that you would find at Enterprise is going to be vulnerable, just not our Tinker Toy Raspberry Pis, right? Thank yeah, goodness. Pretty, pretty much. <laughs> And also, also if you have, uh, if you have like a bunch of older plug computers or like other boards like this that um, you're just using for projects, they are not vulnerable either because they are probably using an even older version of the ARM v5, ARM v6, or ARM v7 architecture. What about so, my PDP forty? Um, <laughs> that's going to actually gain sentience and just try to physically strangle you. So uh, watch out for that again. Yeah, my my uh, PDP eleven is in, uh, invulnerable also. <laughs> only because you keep it air gapped, man. That's, uh, <laughs> that's the only reason. You got to watch out for those things. They're shady, and you know it. Um, mm-hmm. Hey, maybe you know something that's terribly shady uh, going on in the world of Linux, and like shady cool. You want to throw some good shade at it? I don't know if there's good shade, but if there is, tell us about it because you can get on the show we'll read what you gotta say if you got some hints thoughts allegations things better left unsaid we would like to know maybe just some complaints about this show like you don't know what you're talking about i'm on the internet look at me um just do me a favor make sure you select uh, lwdw linux weekly daily wednesdays or for a saturday show jordan does a relationship advice segment um definitely I, I, I i will fix your marriage good it is a thing all we need is name email and you know i i kind of double down on this i i don't say this all the time. At least be smart enough to type in a BS email address that's resolvable or it just instantly goes to spam and we never see it. I clean out that folder like once every four months by right clicking and poof. But but I, I totally own fartatfarts.com. What are you talking about? A boot. I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm talking about, uh, we were talking about the, what was it last week? It, I want to call it Star Office. It was like Star Office, but worse because it had more DRM tied into it. And um, like, hey, what do you use? Manuel wrote us back to talk about uh, his personal Libre things. Office. Libre Office, man. He says, uh, well, I've done a lot of talking. Jordan, you take it. I, I mean, he calls it GNU plus Libre Office, which I'm pretty sure is not the actual name of the project. Mm-hmm. But he says... Regarding a Microsoft Word replacement, I actually prefer LibreOffice, which I've taken to calling GNU plus Libre or whatever. I've tried WPS Office despite my suspicion of the software and does great with normal text files, but some of my old files with fancy nested tables give me random Chinese characters because you probably have some Unicode overlap. 
<laughs> GNU plus LibreOffice. Uh, actually opens the files correctly, even if it changes the line weights, colors, and renders fonts differently. Uh, at least the file opens and can be edited correctly. A few years back, some of my files disappeared from Google Drive. Also, I haven't checked recently, but last I knew, Google Docs doesn't do too great with nested tables. Jordan will know a lot about this issue, as he's into pen and paper gaming. I write a lot of pen and paper gaming materials, which practically demand a lot of complex tables. They don't demand nested tables. Also, um, there, there, there's an entirely different debate I could be having about why you should organize your tables better in your role-playing guides, but you, 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 can, you can hit me up after we get to the contact section. We'll have that debate. Yeah, I don't know. I've been using I've been using Google Office pretty or uh, Google um, Google Drive pretty. You've been heavily. using the Google Just Office, for... man. Do they know they haven't kicked you out? <laughs> that listen, 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 man. It's where I sleep at night. I'm cold. It's 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 icy in the Toronto winters. Uh, well, but even even then, Google Apps is pretty solid. I yes, I've heard of sometimes. Files will just randomly disappear. I don't think I've ever encountered that, but of course, if um, if you are ultra paranoid about Google messing up, which they do, they're not perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, not yet until the Google AI achieves true sentience and then rules us all. Um, then, yeah, you're definitely going to want to stick with LibreOffice. It's pretty solid. If you want something a little more lightweight, Appy Word is also fine. I don't know how it's going to deal with nested tables. Well, but there, there's, no sh there's no shortage of Office software on Linux. Uh, d does he mean GNU Libre nested tables? Is that the the right way to say G it? G GNU, GNU plus Linux plus tables uh, um, with, with, and, and, and Knuckles. And Knuckles? And Jill, Knuckles. what do you use? I, I'm Google all the things. I don't. I, I think yeah. it's always in Google's interest not to lose your stuff because they're a data mining company to sell ads. And yeah. I know that. I understand. I'm the product. They don't charge me anything, which, well, I pay them whatever for the Google Drive thing, but they don't give me a phone number to call anyone up. Yeah, I use LibreOffice, Google Docs, or just uh, NetEdit or XEdit or GEdit. Hmm. <laughs> Those are, they're, in fact, for most of my notes, I just use GEdit or Vi. <laughs> oh, I, I use everyone's <laughs> favorite text yeah. editor. It's called Thunderbird. <laughs> Emacs for life. Uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> if I if I if I had air for horns, they would be playing right now. <laughs> I love editing video in my text editor. It's the greatest thing ever. And then I can check my IRC and email without That's, leaving the program. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Hey, Jill. Thanks again so much for filling in for Pedro, who just totally bailed on us. Uh, he had important things to do, though. No, he didn't. He's no, like, no, 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 he didn't. None. <laughs> he, didn't. He, he just <laughs> tapped out. Jordan, same goes for you, buddy. Uh, thanks for showing up, man, on your vacation. And uh, yeah, take taking time away from my precious video games. I'm feeling the itch. <laughs> oh snap, ladies and gentlemen, boys I, I and girls. I got the switch itch. We want to thank everyone who showed up live in Shot Realm and. Uh, screen back in our direction we'll be back next week i don't know what the configuration of ultron will be but it will be one of that but we need to thank all the beautiful people making this possible and we like to do that with a little thing called credits oh yes mm -hmm. awesome see Joe, Yay, you're, even a, <laughs> you're in the uh, it's, Ang 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 angry canadian yeah and jill bryan oh oh my gosh <laughs> Then we get our executive Thank you producers. Thank so much for having me on, Ben. This is exciting. I've been wanting to do this for a while now. So. Yeah, it's yeah. like riding a chainsaw. <laughs> it's not something you should ever do, but as long as you don't tell anyone, and your friends and family don't find out, it's usually pretty cool. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> actually man, I saw the people who were on the ice skates, and they they do it in Canada apparently, and they stick the chainsaw into the ice lake and zzz and take off. Oh, and they just like take off with a mm. block of ice. No, no, they go flying across the frozen lake. <laughs> oh, they use the chainsaw. Oh, yeah, I know. The, yeah, I, 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 I'm aware of that. I've never actually seen that one, like in person. Well, you see, this is the reason I, I had a Triumph motorcycle for twenty seconds because that taught me in that short amount of time that I don't have whatever it is in the back of my brain that says "time out, buddy, time out." That, that's going to get you deaded and broken. So 
Yeah, I saw that. I, mm-hmm. I want to do that so bad. So I've intentionally stayed away from Canada. Yeah, I, I mean, Canada doesn't want you anyways, so. Yeah, this is, this is also true. I am currently banned from Canada, which is not, we're not saying more, that more, yeah. for a comedic Ben effect. Banada Stone. Um, LGC web, let's get the audio saved. Yeah, I don't. Let's see. We want to show off Jill's computer room. I don't didn't really have a way to do that in the show. I'm trying to think of a way to do it in the after show. You sent me an edited version of it, but you didn't give me permission to see it. Oh, was that the YouTube link or the? No, the, the... edited down one. Yeah. Oh, interesting. I tried to open it and it's like, you don't have permission to this. Oh, well, that it was the same one that was in the YouTube link. Um, oh, so the four minute one was the edited one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's actually five minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's. Hang on, let me see. Can I? Hmm. 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 Let me think for a sec. No, don't think. That's a bad idea. That's rubbish. Um, Thinking gives you wrinkles, man. File manager. Can I get to the desktop through this? That's interesting that Google Drive, my Google Drive drop blocked you. It doesn't block me. It's just like I don't have permission. Huh. Mm. That's what I said. Is there audio on this? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, all right. Let, 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 hmm. Hmm. How do I do this? Splorch. We'll just turn Jordan into Jill's. <laughs> no, no, I don't want to be Jill. <laughs> Too bad, buddy. I don't. I don't want to be. I don't. I don't want to be married to Steve. I hate that guy. <laughs> I, I. I. I don't hate Steve. I'm mildly Aww. indifferent to him. <laughs> Thank you, everyone in chat. Foxy, and Barbrandt, and Artharon, and Steve Husband, and S. Michelle, and and Strider, and Mir PPC. <laughs> Thank you for all your kind words. <laughs> okay, let's light this thing up, Jill, and you can tell us what's going on. Okay. The, um... Okay, and here <laughs> it is. Oh, hang on. This is Jill's yeah, we, computer I, room. There's audio. Jill Linux mm-hmm. Girl's computer room and environs at night. <laughs> and all its mm. oh, RGB Oh, should I get goodness. switched Skyroom? <laughs> so I wanted to show you this hmm. at nighttime. There's my MSI... Okay, so that is the uh, computer a, in my hallway, actually. <laughs> oh, so we're, we're we're just making it. Yes. <laughs> and so mm. we enter. And, it, Jill and this has. Uh, is is there any any sound going over the stream? Yeah, you guys are get. Oh, you want the sound too? Oh, there it is. Oh, okay, that that's why it was disconcerting. I couldn't hear it. <laughs> Build and maintain computers. I mean, it's kind of my own. Well. Actually, my own computer go. store. <laughs> so, anyways, here we go. I was just going to let you narrate it if you wanted. Oh, okay. The music, it's, it's, it actually goes with the, the beat of the music. <laughs> well, I got the music pulled up. Okay, cool. Yeah, so this is my big rig here. Um, actually, those are some of the computers behind my big rig. Uh, most of the... A lot of the computers in my room didn't get filmed because <laughs> I was trying to c- cut this short. I actually recorded an hour's worth of footage for this. Hmm. <laughs> and that's my son. That's my main system I'm using right now. And that was my three monitor gaming rig. And of course, the LGC flyer on the wall. <laughs> and those are lots of things from scale. And here's some of my vintage computers. And I have lots of uh, mini computers that I collect, including thin clients, POS systems, 
And that is my dual processor Pentium Pro 200 megahertz. It was one of my, my first really big case mods. We actually, uh, Steve Husband uh, colored the uh, panels for me on the, the full height so ATX case. What were you running in that sunbox? Or is, are you still running like Saber 2 architecture in there or what? Um, actually, um, it's a Core 2 Duo Extreme quad okay. core. All and right. that's what I'm using now. I'm going to be actually, I, I've got a 1060, GTX 1060 in it right now. But um, on my my next time I get a new graph GPU, I'm going to upgrade the motherboard. So I might put a Threadripper in it. I was thinking about that. Those are, um, oh. The, they, this is my room at night. Me <laughs> playing my games. Uh, Steve has been kindly uh, uh, photographed me. <laughs> I, and we just I, use I, I would, I would just say though, if, if you're gonna get a if you're gonna get a thread ripper, I would be concerned about starting additional fires in California. No, the heat yes. it <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this it's definitely meant to be heard with the music. So Jill, and, don't you uh, know that you're supposed to play your video games with the lights on? That's bad for your eyes. And if any of that <laughs> was true, I would be mothering blind. Seriously. <laughs> And these are Wait, some of my, not? this is actually Shut up. some of my, my case modding from, um, oh, the early 80s and 90s. So, you know, I, w oh, I was you, doing this you, you, you way back IRL when, before no that bias. was a thing. <laughs> or XIs, whatever it was. Yeah. And that, yeah, actually that's XMMS running, running one of the visualizations. <laughs> it's one of my favorites it's called Infinity. And that's Window Maker, and that... 21 inch monitor was my workhorse for like 10 years. That's what I did all, all my professional animation on and what I had prepared for my students for yeah. El Camino College. <laughs> and yeah, so you had to see, I know I know Ben doesn't care for the blingies, but I had to show you my room at No, night. no, it's, it, it, it's it. actually nice to see what hell looks like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, all right, I got and, it, I got it. All right. <laughs> and then oh. I have stars on my ceiling. <laughs> so I like to bling all the, all the things and make it pretty. But yeah, I literally have hundreds of computers. I have several hundred in this room, and then I have, have well over a hundred out in the garage in storage. Hmm. And uh, we're in the middle of remodeling the house right now, so my room isn't done. But when it's done... I'm going to have floor to ceiling computers. I'm going to build big racks, industrial racks, and uh, uh, shel get industrial shelving in here so I can display uh, all my vintage computers. And, um, I, I, I just got I just got to say, though, this is a wonderful celebration of just hoarding. It is. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is. I hoard computers, but my room is we're, very we're, we're all, tidy. We're all compulsive hoarders. <laughs> I'm a hoarder, but I'm also very obsessively clean. <laughs> <laughs> Every computer in here is clean inside and out. <laughs> there, and they all work. <laughs> or organized um, or, I mean, collectors, I mean. Uh, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and every computer in here has Linux on it. Even the oldest computers have Linux on it. And I have, have the original um, operating systems represented on the computers as well. So I dual boot, dual boot a lot of them. It, well, I always enjoyed I went through that phase, as mm -hmm. everyone does. Of using sun cases. Sun cases are monsters are... to mod. I mean, you will yes. burn up dremels. Yes. No joke. I know that well. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I saw the pictures of yours, Ben, when you mm -hmm. were upgrading it. <laughs> I think it was a tank. I just took it out and went, yeah, no. Uh -uh. A, you know, the thing weighs at least 100 freedom units with nothing yeah. really in it. A couple of drives. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, room is really uh, cool. Oh, by the way, those stars, those glow in the dark stars. If you ever do prank warfare with your friends, where you break into each other's house and mess with things, stars on the ceiling, great. Yes. Wait, yeah. Wait, they think they're going to bed at night, and they're like, "What is going on?" Yeah. <laughs> you get the text at like three o'clock. It's like, "I see you bit over to my house." And I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> oh, you're just or, finding or uh, some or some um, infrared sensitive paint, like paint a monster on the ceiling or some shit. That'd be pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually an old um, uh, laser uh, um, uh, laser lamp from from the early two thousands. 
Mm. Freedom unit is an American unit of measurement for weight. Just a generic user, unit of measurement for anything, really. Yeah. You, you, you can be like eight freedom units tall or like six freedom units heavy. It's a natural like contain, progression like, from rods to the hogshead. Yep. <laughs> or or you, you can consa- you can contain a certain number of freedom units of liquid. Hmm. I know I contain like 18 freedom units worth of liquid. <laughs> Ugly bags of mostly water? Something yeah. like that. <laughs> You are not ugly. That was just, you know, from Star Trek. I completely disagree with that statement. Jordan, you're horrifying. Yeah, no. I, 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 I'm a horrifying bag of mostly water. No, I am too. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, let's see. What is today's Wednesday? What are we doing tomorrow, Jordan? Um, I have not thought that far ahead. Because reasons because i procrastinate a ton uh we're probably gonna do i don't, I don't know you want you want to do some besiege tomorrow i was thinking besiege is a possibility we also have the inner space game which we got a week early that i guess at some point we need does, to stream uh does that a, does that a multiplayer no uh, that's the downside to it yeah and also watching me like struggle my way through a shmup is not that entertaining it's not a shmup at all it's an exploration game it's very nintendo Mm. You should actually look at it at some point. It was a shoot 'em up. Or am I thinking of the other one? I might be thinking of the other one. <laughs> These are questions I could not answer for you, my friend. It's in the only inner space I'm concerned with stars um, Robert Picardo as a cowboy. Have I seen that? M- maybe. Um, it's a 1987 movie. Ooh, probably not. So it's 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 possible. I like to pretend the movies didn't exist in the 80s. Den- Dennis Quaid, Martin Short, Meg Ryan, yeah, Robert Picardo as the cowboy. Yeah, that's uh, I don't know Henry Henry Gibson. Oh, what's what's her, what's her face from American Dad did a did a thing in there before she was a hack. Um. Yeah, it was it was it was basically just like a comedy fantastic voyage. Oh, I think I'm um uh the Orville's getting a spin-off series. Yes. <laughs> I wanted to bring that really Farland knows how to do Star Trek. That's <laughs> what I was going to say cuz I know Jill and Steve they like the Star Treks and he he's made the what, Star Trek that everyone not everyone, but yeah. uh, people who wanted uh, Discovery to be we just want TNG back and that's like exactly. if they if they didn't yeah. get that it was horrible mm-hmm. no matter what. So mm-hmm. yeah, uh, yeah, I thought that was interesting. A lot of people seem to like the horrible. Yeah, I I absolutely love it. Mm. It's it's just like seeing I... Galaxy Quest every week. <laughs> See, that's that's the thing. I think I think when the Orville does the Star Trek stuff that it's trying to do, mm-hmm. it does it really well. And every yes. time it tries to do the comedy stuff, it just does not land. But I yeah, think he is legally that. obligated to throw the comedy stuff in there so they can go parody. Wink. Don't sue us. Oh, I, absolutely. No, I, I totally. I only. I totally understand the the where and the why of the Orville or or of the Orville. Um, my problem is just like. You're trying to shoehorn all this stuff. It's like, no, you're making a solid Star Trek show. Just keep that. Uh, just keep making Star Trek. Yeah, he was. And he's yes, incredible I, 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 at doing I, I, the drama. It's really good. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't think the drama is him because it's not. I don't think he's still a, like a writer on there. Yeah, yeah, that is true. He's uh, he's he's written some of it, but yeah, mostly he. Yeah, he he he, he, yeah. Uh, he executive produces. He created the concept. Yeah, uh, I'm looking up. Uh, oh no, he wrote he wrote the actually. Yeah, oh damn, no, he wrote a bunch pi- of episodes. the pilot. I, mean, I could imagine he did a lot of work because this is the response to CBS after CBS told him to go die in a fire when he's like, "Hey man, can I 
play with a Star, Star Trek, Trek property. And, yeah. and they're like, no, yeah. go away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, he wrote he wrote most of the episodes in the first season. OK, never mind then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was pretty sure of that. So I was going to check that, but. I gotta, I gotta find something right quick. Yeah, which, which is why when he tries to do like the social issue commentary, it's a bit like, no, you you didn't do any research on that. You're you're kind of just going off a of hearsay. But the I I feel I feel his heart's in the right place. He just needs to like put a little more effort into that stuff. Also, also, um, I'm. I, I've the ship designs still do nothing for me. The fact the fact yeah. that like, they have to about, they have to like about face everything really pisses me off. One of the it, coolest it's... things in Old Man's War was uh, yeah. the fact that like all the spaceships are donuts because they all need to rotate for gravity. Yeah, it's kind of funny because it, to me it's kind of a uh, comedic look at, at the Voyager ship. <laughs> it's kind of reversed <laughs> with the hole in it. <laughs> Yeah, also, also like the, the the three lumpy nacelles. I don't. That doesn't yes. do anything for me. Like yeah. that that did that focus group well or something? I don't. Yeah. So that, that look at that. That that is a young Seth MacFarlane when he was a wee baby. Mm-hmm. Doing well, it's yeah. funny because I think they were. He was he was trying to harken back to some of the early like dreadnought ships from before? from Trek Classic. So, and they have the three nacelles, but they weren't used much in the in the original series or yeah. um, Enterprise or TNG. So, or Voyager. So, oh, I think that the, was the... The, the, those <laughs> those Toys R Us Vulcan ears. Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's that's that, that's old school, man. Yeah. Who's Seth Myers? I don't know, man. Seth Myers. He's from uh he's from <laughs> the Saturday Night Live. He used to be on there. No. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Um I think that's gonna do it, beautiful people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Jordan's got to go work out. Joe, what are you up to the rest of the day, man? Got any big parties? No, just gonna gonna relax and maybe get some sleep. Some sleep? <laughs> What's that like? I know. Yeah, I have to ask that what's, same what's, question. What's that just like? <laughs> I'm like you, Vin. I don't sleep well. I, I'm I'm lucky if I get two or three solid every, every oh, night. Oh, I sleep and... fine. People are like, are you got insomnia? <laughs> no, I don't. It's just like uh, I might get four hours, and th- those are it's, it's great sleep. But I'm gonna get four hours, and then I'm up. I can't do anything. So I'm sure it'll put me in an early grave. It's awesome. Oh, absolutely. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> oh, my young nephew Sean is in in IRC. Awesome. Hmm. My family came out to watch me. Isn't that nice? <laughs> are the, are they sleeping well though? That's the real question. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> See, that, that's the thing. Now they're all worried about your sleep, Jill. They didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Poor Steve, husband. <laughs> Steve's awesome. <laughs> he my my awesome husband. Don't listen to her, Steve. We like you. <laughs> Like, I, what, uh, hey, I said I'm mildly indifferent. Mildly indifferent is a, is a pretty big compliment coming from the Canadian. <laughs> Steve Husband, am I a good waifu? <laughs> you, you, you don't have to answer that, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> As your legal representation, I advise you. <laughs> <laughs> and Kevin says we aren't worried about Jill. <laughs> <laughs> very beautiful people yeah so I, yeah t- tomorrow we'll do maybe some besieged maybe some headspace or inner space whatever the hell it is um we'll get something and i guess it. yeah fr- fr- friday we got or saturday we got that uh, linux uh, gamecast weekly mm-hmm. thing 9.30 Eastern, Standard Moon Time, it is a thing. We talk all about the Linux gaming 
subculture? Are we a sub subculture? I don't think we're. A, I think I think we're like. Um, yeah, sub subculture might be the. Uh, Is subculture right like to too mainstream? It. <laughs> really. We are a, we are a subset of the PC Master Race community. I don't know. I, I don't know, man. Who, 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 oh, so we, we got we got we got the Atomic Ass. He's he's showing up this week. Yeah, Tom, Atomic's gonna from oh, I think he's in Ohio. I want to say Ohio. No, or is it not Cincinnati? Somewhere in there. I don't know. Um, he's gonna yeah, be so joining he'll, us. He'll, 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 yeah, he'll be swinging by. You guys can like compare jack penises. My jack and the implementation works. What do you mean compare? <laughs> oh, oh, we'll, we'll 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 see. I'm I'm sure I'm sure there'll be lots of palaver for me to like fuck off and go drink. I don't know. Yeah, no. Jack Paulson also, huh, Vin? They all work. Oh, it's about to. Uh, as I eloquently uh, wrote to Jordan, I believe it was yesterday. I was like, "Hey, look look at what I'm about to stab myself and uh, my genitalia with." Coming up next with an expander yeah. compressor gate. It's going to be using um, the line inserts from the HD 404 to route that in. Which, yes, ladies and gentlemen, that means we got to buy a rack. And I, I found the Whoa. cheapest rack on Amazon that I'm almost scared to put the uh, 2222 on. Because it'll fold. Oh, yeah. It. It's, yeah. It's going to be a little top heavy. Yeah, it's going to be a little top heavy, but. I'm also going to throw a shelf in there. Not that we need a shelf, but it's the stability shelf. I'm going to call it Shelfy McShelf Face. Mm. It's all on our Amazon oh. wish list, boys and girls. Head over there. Um, now we're going to pick it up. I'll be able to get a good deal on the compressor and limiter. I think I'm going to be able to get that for like right at 50 bucks, which is cool because then we don't have to worry about when we're bringing you guys on, anybody on. Jill, you did a fantastic job keeping your audio Aww. tight under control then again this is not your first rodeo oh this is well, not a problem <laughs> this is not something i was concerned about i just had to set her level on our input interface device and route that to the mixer we were good but then we get things you know like pedro refuses not to laugh directly in the mic that's what a limiter does it's like boom hard gates it noise gate <laughs> if you're messing around but it's not that so much as and what we're planning on is bringing new people onto the show on a very regular basis. We, you don't have to be mic trained. And I don't have to sit no, here you writing. Did. So. <laughs> Aw, thank you, Vin. I'll, I'll, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I've, I, got the, I got the hand-me-down this week, so I spent yesterday... I spent I spent like an hour yesterday setting that up. You you did a good so, job. Yep. Yeah. Jordan now has the original mixer from LGC that we did the first two hundred episodes mm -hmm. on. Oh, awesome! That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, <laughs> and and so my 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 other Behringer is gonna go sit in the closet until then gets a new microphone. In which case, then we have one complete Linux GameCast starter kit for. Mm -hmm. uh, some poor oh, sod cool. who's gonna get I'll be able to the pass board. the original we passed the T Brown Memorial microphone to Pedro. So he's got yes. that and I'm going to be getting a um Heil PR thirty B. It's gonna be the first dynamic mic I'm bringing into the mix just so I can we're gonna make everything louder just so Strider will shut up and you just get so that Strider will be drowned out. <laughs> exactly. We gotta do a lot of processing on that. I'm saving up for that uh, pile and, well, the Heil, not pile. My brain's not Those working. are great mics. Yeah, I, have, I know. Uh, Leo, that's his his mic of preference. They use a PR-40, which they use, um, PR-40s I don't, PR not a huge 40s. fan of because they get too much of the DJ bass sound to them. They do. You got yeah, too much so. boots. And too much I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, Jill. Anything that has extra bass, I don't need. I don't. Yeah, you don't need any of that. Because then it just, sounds like I'm overprocessed. It, it, compresses, it compresses the, the right. sound too. Exactly. The uh, diaphragm. Even though this is uh, the PR30B, I brought. A, I was telling Jordan this earlier. Probably brought about six grand worth of microphones home from the station the other day and plugged them in and tested them. The, this one's got a massive diaphragm on it. It doesn't sound much like a dynamic mic, and it's got so it's got really good off-axis rejection, and it's affordable. It's about what I paid for this back in the day. It's like two hundred and fifty bucks. So, 
that's not bad. And we'll be able to send this mm. to somebody, too. So that's how we, we like to pay it forward. Aw, that's yeah. awesome. As we can script people into this. Share the things, Linux. just like mm. open source community. <laughs> we share our... Well, that's kind of one of the... We're, we're going to be doing some open source show type stuff. Uh, I, I'll, I'll let you know about it when we, when we get off air because I'm being a dick and teasing everyone. <laughs> cool, um, I can't wait to hear uh, about it. Uh, I'll let you know what's going on. But on that bombshell, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we got to get out of here. I got to turn this into a podcast uh, so people can put it into their brain meats. It's been fun. Thank you again, Jill. Thank you, everyone uh, watching online, joining us live uh, before and after the fact. And uh, everyone who supports us on patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast, we could not do this without you. You're the real MVPs. Jordan, thank you as well, sir. Die to fire. We'll see you next week. Mm -hmm. Bye, everyone. Bye, LGC.